Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at the Ohio River Jack, the Riot XOK. And then, are you new to fixed blades? Well, start here. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, I had a couple of favorite comments this past week. The first one was from The Observer 6579. Hopefully he was trolling me uh, because at this point it's well established. I cannot pronounce B-O-W-I-E correctly. Whether I say Bowie, uh, which I said growing up as a Yank, or whether I say Bowie, which everyone is telling me I have to say because that's the proper pronunciation. So Observer, The Observer, 6579. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know I'm not uh, pronouncing it correctly, no matter which way I say it. So appreciate the comment. Uh, thanks for uh, dropping that in there. Uh, the next one was from Craig Vincent, 795. And he says, hello, Bob. I've been watching the channel for a while now, but somehow I keep missing the live show. I should probably set up an alarm because I really enjoy your content. I'm coming up on a year now as a knife enthusiast. Uh, when I bought a rat one last October 1st, thinking uh, I might qualify as a knife junkie because upon checking out my inventory of my acquisitions of the past year, I came up with a count of 164 knives. With eight more on the way to be delivered, yes, you are a knife junkie, sir. Scary thing is, in addition to what I have in my possession, there were another 35 or so that I gave away to friends, family, etc. Another sign that you're a knife junkie, you're giving away knives. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And there's also 40 more gas station blades that I unloaded at a pawn shop as my tastes changed from watching channels like yours. <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, that means the actual number is over 200. That comes out to about a knife every two days. Is that normal in the community? Should I be afraid? Cheers. Uh, Craig, the only thing you should be afraid of is your uh, knife to day ratio. We need to up those numbers. Those are amateur numbers in this game, sir. So, um, but 200, uh, two every, uh, a knife every two days, I'm sorry, is a good start. So uh, we'll bring those numbers up and you'll be a knife junkie uh, supreme sooner than you think. Which is dangerous. All right. I, I, before we get to uh, the pocket check, I want to just say that I went to the bookstore, took took my girls to the bookstore. It's their favorite place to go, um, or one of them anyway. And and of course, I went over to the old um, went over to the old magazine section to check on the knife situation. And yes, indeed, there there is a special edition of Blade magazine. It's really awesome. Uh, I can't believe that this magazine still, or the magazines in general still exist, but this has a really nice cover, like this special kind of, okay, I'm not going to sell the magazine to you, but go pick up Blade Magazine. I mean, first of all, this one is chock full of awesome articles about military knives and karambits and other cool stuff, um, but, and, and also tests, uh, but we want to keep this magazine in print. Um, that's like kind of going to the 511 store and buying a pair of pants every once in a while. I have a 511 store near me and it is the most tactical thing for hundreds of miles. Well, for, for quite, for quite a radius. So I like to go there and try and keep it in business. Let's do the same with blade magazine so we can uh, keep getting blade show. And, um, I don't know. I don't want these things to go away. It's like the internet people on paper. So go check it out. Uh, all that said, I think it's time now for a pocket check. Okay, today, I almost dropped that Bowie. Today, in my front right pocket, I had this. My beautiful Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza 21. I love this knife. This is the classic Sabenza as far as I'm concerned. I know they came out with the 31 with all the newfangled editions like... Uh, like the awesome ceramic ball uh, ball bearing that's in there, uh, the lock interface, very nice. I have that on my Umnums on, not to brag or sound like a jerk, but I don't necessarily need it uh, on, I don't need another Sabenza to, to get that. This is probably the one and only Sabenza in my life. 
uh, and I absolutely love it. It is it is a perfect knife, I have to say. I popped this in my pocket because we had a gathering to go to that was going to be fancy, uh, fancier than I had clothes ready for. So, so I decided to pop a fancy knife in my pocket, but understated. I mean, that's the cool thing about this knife. It's not uh, it's not flashy in any way. It is just solid and pretty much a perfect production knife. So I had that in my front right pocket, was not called upon to use that at the party, but I was ready to pull it out and impress people with my understated masterpiece. Uh, next up in my uh, front, it was in the right uh, because I've been carrying my phone in my left pocket a lot and I can't do too much, but uh, I had the, oh, I had the feel good Jack here, right in front of the mic. Yep. The Jack Wolf Knives Feel Good Jack. Uh, this is a beauty. I love this. It's a doctor's knife. Uh, you can see that with the parallel um, handles, uh, the, the spine and the bottom part of the handle running parallel. Uh, that gives you a doctor's knife pattern with the flat uh, with the flat pommel here. That was used to grind up pills. And then in doctor's knives, um, so doctors back in the day would make house calls. They'd go to your house when you were sick and uh, they would they would make a tincture out of medication for you. And they'd take a little pill and they'd grind it up with the bottom of their doctor's knife. They'd cut it up first with the blade. And then there was usually a second uh, implement, a spatula type thing. They'd stir it up in some alcohol or some water and there was your medicine. So that was the origin of the doctor's knife. Uh, this is uh, three productions ago, uh, three runs ago for Jack Wolf Knives the beautiful Feel Good Jack. I was perusing um, the Jack Wolf Knives dealers and uh, Ben has responded, Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives has responded to demand over the past year and upped the production. And so you can now find the knives uh, at the dealers uh, after they're released. You know, sometimes, uh, well, for the first bunch of months for Jack Wolf Knives, the knives would drop and they would sell out immediately. So he upped the production a little bit. And so now you can go and you can actually find Jack Wolf Knives on uh, on dealer websites, albeit not tons of them, but they're more available than they were before. So we thank Ben for that. All right. Next up, of course, uh, on the waistband, in the waistband, I had the Nova One and uh, very excited to say that uh, we have a little update on the Nova One. It's actually a pretty big update. They're all finished. I think uh, Jim has a picture. They are all finished and they are um, going off, or not going off to, but they are off at their engraver to get the Knife Junkie logo in there. Of course, it will not be that big. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I had this in my pocket, not my pocket, in my waistband today. There they are. Look at them in all their glory. 25 Nova ones in their sheaths, uh, all polished up and ready to go. All right. So they will be heading, uh, they will be heading back to him after the engraver. And uh, I think he'll be doing final, final touches. I'm not sure what that is. I think they all have their edges or maybe that's last. And then he sends them to me and then I send them out to you. Lucky, uh, lucky people who got them. Uh, so very excited about that. I haven't carried the uh, Nova one uh, too much in the past three or four weeks because I've been uh, I've been carrying uh, trying out new knives and I've gotten a uh, you know recently got this uh, new Dirk Pinkerton knife I had to carry that around I just got a new knife which I'm going to be showing off in a minute so you know things rotate but uh, it was great to have the Nova one uh, back in my uh, in my waistband and for fall that will be my EDC again. Okay, and then last up, of course, I had an, an ESK. That's an emotional support knife. Still trying to make fetch happen. The CJRB Large Pyrite. Uh, I just love this knife. I am really smitten with it. Um, I keep finding myself putting it in my pocket. Uh, today, it was in a secondary role uh, for emotional support, and it did do that well. Uh, but this is just a great cutter, too. This is an awesome, awesome knife. Like if you had 90, what is this? I think 80 bucks, 75 bucks for a folder and you wanted a large folder and and this was going to be your folder for a long time, I would highly recommend this knife. Um, unless you do really, really hard stuff with it. It's kind of thin. You know, I, I don't know if, if you could do uh, quote unquote uh, hard use with this, but 
I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like you, A, you could, and B, hard use. I mean, <clears throat> move along to a different tool. You know, if you're on a job site and and the use is that hard, you know, don't use the knife. But uh, for all cutting tasks and for pretty much everything, I think this knife is really awesome. But especially uh, it does fit that emotional support knife roll really well. Really well. Huh. It's like a little lag here today. Sorry, folks, about that. But this is what I had in my pocket today. Uh, this is the Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza 21, the beautiful, beautiful. And then I had the uh, the Feel Good Jack from Jack Wolf Knives and the Nova One from me and Hogtooth Knives and then the CJRB Large Pyrite. You got to let me know what is in competition in your mind for the CJRB Pyrite. Because to me, CJRB is making the best button locks right now. What do I have to go on? Well, the large pyrite and the small pyrite. That's pretty much it. But uh, I have been so incredibly impressed with the quality of, of their button locks, especially the way they have a very finely milled pocket uh, with very tight tolerances that the plunge lock actually fits into as, a, as opposed to a cone that it's ever forced into with the spring. I don't think that works quite as well to me. It sticks and it has, I don't know, it has potential to slip out. So CJRB, Artisan, best button locks? What do you think? Hot topic. Drop it in the comment below. All right. Uh, I just wanted to mention that coming up, we have another Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway, as we always do every month of the year. Uh, September 21st will be the Thursday this year, and it's a seeing double Civivi package. So this comes with two really cool Civivis. This one is the KV, KV, or Kai 5. I don't know what the hell, uh, what the name actually is. Um, it's KI-V, so that could be Kai 5, or that could be Kai V, or it could be Kiv, you know, it could be anything. Uh, but it's a very, very cool knife. This is the larger uh, of them, I believe, but it's still a small little front flipper. And uh, you can always turn it around for a Pakal if you're in a pinch. Um, and then here you go. This is a uh, Justin Lundquist Civivi. This beautiful little thing is the Lumi with a, a very, I love the shape of this. It reminds me of maybe something um, Scandinavian, uh, but very deeply hollow ground and nice and pointy. Really nice front flipper here. And uh, yeah, so this is the package. It's actually two Civivis and uh, and the usual stickers and other stuff. Uh, this is what you get for being a gentleman junkie. Uh, that's the uh, highest tier of support on Patreon. Uh, do come join us and check out the, the benefits you get from it, uh, as well as the benefits I get from it. I mean, Jim and I really do appreciate the support we get on Patreon. It really helps. I just got a new camera here. And that's what you're seeing. And maybe that's why we're lagging a little bit. I still have to figure all the all the technicals out, but it looks so much better. And I'm so thrilled. And some of that was was Patreon money. So it's so greatly appreciated. We can increase the quality of the show. And uh, well, there you go. There's my Patreon pitch. I thank uh, one and all who who uh, who go to Patreon and, and sign up. But I also thank one and all who just watch the, the show and comment. So. There you go. Coming up on the Knife Junkie Podcast, some interesting stories in Knife Life News. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Every time with that with that liner, it gets me. The, uh, the knives they sell over there at Knives Ship Free. Manaja. All right, let's get let's blast through these stories. We got a lot of knives on the other side of Knife Life News to talk about and show off. So um, I just wanted to show uh, talk about a couple of new things that came out. One is from Bradford. Um, these guys, Bradford with the Guardian, the original Guardian, uh, 
they just really kind of revolutionized the concept of EDC fixed blade carry um, and, and really kind of popularized it. Well, their line has grown immensely uh, with, with uh, you know, they're all kind of customizable. They're, their production knives, they're small production knives, um, uh, batches, and you can get all sorts of uh, different sheaths and grips and stuff. And for some reason, I have never gotten one, but maybe this knife will be the one that uh, that gets me to do it. This is an in-between size. This is the Bradford Guardian 4.2. It's a uh, four and a quarter inch blade um, to go right neatly between the four and a half and the four inch blade. So uh, this is like the Andela of the Bradford Guardian line coming in Magna Cut and uh, is available now. Looks beautiful. Uh, I'd like to get one, <laughs> but I'd like to get every knife. So I, I, I'm just going to I'm just going to wait and see if one of these days I'm going to get one. I mean, look at those con contoured handles, 50 50 choil. That's a great thing about this knife. It's a full size knife, but it gives you um, it just kind of shrinks down the whole package by making the handle smaller with that 50 50 choil. So it looks really cool. And you get an awesome scout carry leather sheath. All right. I'm going to blast through this and not talk so much. Another one <laughs> coming up from Wii. They're in their season of un, uh, of limited knives. This one looks really cool, very up my alley. It's a a somewhat plain for Wii knife uh, company um, uh, titanium frame lock. Now this one has a beautiful clip point blade. It's called the Nefarious. Uh, so is it nefarious? Is the Nefarious a an evil knife? Uh, it's a low slung Bowie putting that point just below the center line, which is great. A lot of people like that uh, because a lot of people are are used to using the tip of the knife for their EDC tasks. And if you have a real upswept clip point, it puts the blade, uh, puts the tip of the blade higher up, meaning you have to uh, curve your wrist more to get the point to be where you want to be. So I'm loving uh, the... Um, sort of rise of the low slung Bowie with that point a little bit lower. You still get the belly of a Bowie, uh, but you get, and the penetration, but the penetration point is lower. So I don't know. I just think it works well. It comes in six different flavors. Look at these. They are beautiful. That nice big inlay down the center. Um, we've got some carbon fibers here, including that copper coil carbon fiber. And then you can see uh, the one on the bottom. That's the Heimskringla. Uh, Damasteel pattern. I like it. Heims, Heims Kringla. Uh, it could it sound any more Nordic? Uh, beautiful, beautiful blade on an awesome handle. Uh, 3.4 inches, 20 CV, and um, just another beauty coming from uh, coming from we. They are uh, they will be available shortly, and there are six of them made, uh, six different flavors at 155 pieces each. So limited. All right, next up, uh, the redesign of the TDI by K-Bar. Now, the TDI from K-Bar is a, a um, pistol grip shaped fixed blade. So literally, you hold it like this, and the blade comes out this way. I have one. I should have dug it out. Uh, but it was originally created uh, by um, John Benner for uh, a, a former police officer, I believe, for gun retention. So it goes in your... Uh, on your belt on the opposite side of your gun. So if someone's grabbing your gun, you can secure their wrist against your hip, grab your TDI, which is very um, uh, intuitive because it's shaped like a gun. That's the point of the, the pistol grip. And then you can slash their arm or cut them or whatever to release their grip from your pistol. So that's why they call it a weapon retention knife. Uh, so this, they had a flipper. This is a totally reinvented version, redesigned version of it. Um, that's a 2.31 inch OS 8 leaf shaped blade with the uh, flipper and the opening hole. You've got the uh, crossbar lock. So that means really you have three different ways of opening it. And I would actually say four, depending on how strong that bar lock is. Uh, so you can use the hole, the flipper. You can use the lock itself by pulling back and, and uh, whipping it out. Or you could probably just hold the handle and whip it out because you can do that with a lot of crossbar locks. So many different ways to open this knife. Uh, grivery handle, my honest assessment of it, well, ambidextrous totally, my honest assessment of this is it would be cool in better materials. Uh, I'm not so hot on the grivery, not so hot on the OS, OS 8, but then you're going to say to me, Bob, this is not uh, 
collector knife. This is not a fancy, this is not pocket jewelry. This is a tool for gun retention. And I say, okay, fine. Then put a wave on it. It's a folder. All right. Next up, last up. Uh, in Israel, some researchers just found a little cache of 1,900-year-old Roman swords, Spatha swords. And the Spathas are uh, long double-edged swords. They were longer than the gladius and kind of gained favor in the, in the latter part of the, um, of the Roman Empire because the cavalry liked them because they had greater reach. But anyway, they were in this cave uh, in the Dead Sea area. And these uh, these Israeli researchers now researcher is kind of a general term. I'm not sure if they're archaeologists or what, but uh, they found these stashed in a remote crack in the back of a cave system. Uh, these spathas and on, on the very right, that's one of those. Um, what do they call? Uh, they're like earlobe. They're stabbing. They're they're thrusting implements, and they have sort of. Um, a uh, pommel that is splits into lobes and you put your thumb in the middle and then you can't miss. But anyway, uh, these things were, were found all stashed together uh, like they were hidden away. And they think that uh, rebels at the time um, were stealing these Roman swords and stashing them in this cave system in, in remote parts of these caves in the, uh, during the Bar Kokhba revolt in 132 to 135 AD. Now, this is the first time I'm ever reading of this. So if you haven't heard of the Bar Kokhba revolt in 132 to 135 AD, don't feel bad. But how beautiful is this? How cool is this? I love this. I feel like we come across stories like this uh, with some frequency because, uh, you know, as the world gets smaller, people are picking through the dirt and they're finding amazing stuff. And I just think that that is, uh, those are really beautiful. And uh, cool to see. And we'll be able to see them in, in museums, I guess, if you travel to Israel. Uh, so do check that out and uh, keep your eyes peeled for uh, these kind of interesting stories about knives out and about. All right. Coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast, let's take a look at some really cool knives that were loaned to me by uh, Five Door and Ket Nesshart. And then I've gotten a couple in as gifts uh, as well. And I bought a few. <laughs> All right. Coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I have some of the best viewers around. Um, I, I'm sure everyone thinks that. It's like their kids. My kids are the best kids. Uh, but my viewers are awesome. And I have some people who just trust me enough to send me really, really cool knives. When they hear me say, oh, I'd love to check that out. Uh, like the Ohio River Jack, which has been out forever. Uh, but I have still not gotten. Uh, and so Kep Muk Nesshart, uh, a good buddy of the show and a frequent contributor to Thursday Night Knives, uh, sent me this. And uh, we have sent a few knives back and forth in the past. And, uh, well, I sent him my, my Shining Mountain Bowie. He sent me a bunch of other stuff. But he sent me the Ohio River Jack to check out by C. Reisner Cutlery and uh, traditional pocket knives. And these things are awesome. They're made by QSP and they are rugged, rugged work knives. Like that's, that's my impression of these. I have not done work with them, but as far as a slip joint goes, these things are built like tanks. I got to say. Um, so he sent me this one. This is the Ohio river Jack single blade um, sheep's foot. They have three different models. Um, they have, and, and so the, this assortment here represents the three different blades they offer. The sheep's foot here, which is a uh, chisel ground, or not chisel ground, I'm sorry, a um, saber ground blade. So super robust there. And then on this knife, you can see both because they do double bladed and single bladed. And uh, so that's the Warncliffe and the spear point. Beautiful, beautiful blades. I love these. Uh, I'm especially fond of these two because they're uh, fully flat ground and uh, for for a slip joint, I guess that's just what I prefer. Full flat ground or full hollow ground. Um, 
beautiful micarta, just awesome um, quality of build. Here you have integral uh, liner bolsters of titanium. Integral meaning, um, in this case, that it's one piece, instead of the bolster being attached to the liner, it's one piece milled out of titanium on both sides. You got a titanium liner through the center, steel springs, amazing canvas micarta, and just great action. Beautiful blades too. I, I'm not a huge spear point lover, but I do love this one. And it's because it, it does what I like best on spear point blades. It widens out towards the belly, starts thinner at the Ricasso and widens out towards the belly. Um, these things are really nice. I am going to get one. I'm going to get one in the canvas micarta. A, I'd like to support a fellow Ohio boy. Well, I don't know if he is from Ohio, actually, but Ohio River. I like that. Uh, I have to support that. You know, th these are my justifications. Uh, the other is I have some, uh, I have a lot of modern slip joints in the form of Jack Wolf knives. I have a Lion Steel. I have a Medford. I have a, a couple of others, but I do not have something like this. I do not have this one. So <laughs> uh, thank you, Ketmuk, for sending these to me. I'm, 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 uh, I'm sold on them now. I really, really like them. And, and the thing I like about them is how um, tough they seem. They just really seem tough. So I'm excited about that. Uh, also, I'm excited about this. Listen, very nice walk and talk on these. Here. I like that they do the double blade, but beware, the double blade is going to be fat. It is a fat, fat mama here. This is like... Uh, three quarters of an inch fat, I got to say, uh, but I like it. So this is probably not going to be the knife I would carry on my person or on my pocket. This would go nicely in a slip on the belt, which you won't catch me doing these days. Uh, I just can't in my current lifestyle. Okay. Next up on loan from five door, uh, a good buddy, Doug sent me these and they are so damn cool here. I'm going to impress you right here. I'm going to move my camera aside. Yes, there it is. <laughs> I did it without cutting myself. The uh, This is the Riot XOK. K, of course, standing for Karambit. Now, there's no need to quickly put it back in, but it has a really cool uh, action here. So you... Well, it comes with a trainer. Why don't I use the trainer? Uh, so the trainer is right here. Beautiful, uh, full-size trainer, albeit lighter but you press this button. So here's the karambit. And on this side, you have a button here. You have a button. Let me see if I can get that to focus. Okay, button right there. And you press it, you kind of hold it like this, facing away from you. Press the button and it releases that part, the main housing with the knife. And then you flip it that way and it pulls the knife all the way out with centrifugal force. And then you just nudge it back and it locks in place. So yeah, you, you can do it fast to close it, but if you do, this could happen. There's no guarantee that the blade is folding in. So it could, it could really mess up your hand. So I recommend that unless you're in a movie, you don't close it slow. I mean, you don't close it fast, you close it slow. So here it is in the bladed version i'm going to put it under the knife cam so you can check out this gorgeous blade man m uh n690 blade steel i think that's what keeps this knife actually somewhat reasonably priced uh, because it comes with the trainer which you have to do with something this uh sort of novel and uh it was only i think it was under 300 dollars for the package if i'm if i'm correct uh, but here, let me show you under the knife cam how this uh, this beauty works. So it's closed. There it is closed. Push the button. Whip out your hand. The blade whips out. And then you whip your hand in the opposite direction. And it closes. And now it's locked. And then it's in your hand, and then you have the, uh, it's in your fist there, you have the blade oriented in, in the perfect position. I love that sort of um, frontward pointing point on a karambit as opposed to downward, because it really makes your 
punches your back fists and this kind of thing it really gives them uh uh extra purchase because that tip is going to go in even if you're not uh, exactly straight on okay so uh very happy to have this and check this out thank you so much five door uh, i really love this thing um my one uh the thing that's stopping me from buying this myself actually I, it's very nice that you sent this to me i appreciate it because it's kind of been a temptation because uh, I've seen them around lately with the with the recent release of them. I have to say that, and I do not have big fingers, but the hole is a little for all of the um, for all of the motion that the design requires for all of the whipping it around with the ring around your finger. I feel like I want it just a little larger, just a little bit larger. Like I wonder how guys with big sausage fingers are going to deal with this if if they if they uh, had one, if it would be an issue. But that's a story for another time. All right, next up, my birthday knife came in. And man alive, am I excited about this. I'm going to hold it up here to my good camera for a second. See if it uh, see if it can find focus. Oh, look at that beauty. All right. All right, let me put this under here. This is an Aaron Bieber Knives 302. Uh, Aaron Bieber was on the show. Um, and actually, I met him at Blade Show. And uh, he had a table with John <clears throat> right next to John Gray. And I walked up to him. Oh, I recognize your knives. I follow you on Instagram, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> we start talking. I find out he's from the Philly area. I tell him I used to live in Philly. And we find out we went to the same art school. And so it was it was really cool. We're about the same age. And uh, I don't think we were there at the same time. Um, but uh, I recognized a real um, art you know, artistic sense in a guy. Um, that sounds silly, but uh, in his knives uh, on Instagram and on how he took the pictures and stuff, I knew that there was something, uh, you know, uniquely artistic about the dude, I guess. Uh, and so I got this and uh, got a chance to get my hands on them at Blade Show and they just melt in your hand, nice and light. Um, it's again, it's a clip point, a low slung clip point with that point down low, great for utility, nice thin flat ground, grind. You have a hollow ground swedge there that looks amazing. And an engraved AB logo, I love that. And then uh, I requested his Sukamaki wrap. He does these in either G10, you can get it in jigged bone I've seen, which is beautiful, that was a hard decision to make, but I ended up going for his Sukamaki wrap here. That's white uh, ray skin under there, and then epoxy um, impregnated cloth he does a beautiful job beautiful job this thing is wickedly sharp and it's magna cut so very very psyched about this one uh showed it to my good buddy dave this old sword blade reviews uh, you check out the uh, interview this week with him the conversation is more of a conversation i've interviewed him before i know who the man is so we just had a great conversation and uh, i knew it after the conversation he went out and got one he has the man has great taste and he's also got a uh, really amazing collection of these sort of fixed blades. So I'm happy to see uh, that there will be one in his collection as well. But this is the one in my collection. And let me just show it to you in reverse grip real quick. <clears throat> I just think it I just think it looks really beautiful. I think it's just a beautiful knife. Go check out Aaron Bieber uh, on Instagram, AB Knives. Uh, he has a really cool pakal uh, that is sort of like a reverse, it's not a reverse Tonto, it's like a recurve Tonto Pakal, and that is cool. And I've seen that one with the jig bone, and if I end up getting that knife, um, that's how I will be getting it, in the jig bone dress. All right, next up, this one was really cool. This was a gift from my good buddy, Jimmy Slash and Cold Steel. And it is Jimmy Slash's new competition chopper, a collaboration with Cold Steel. I mean, who else? Would Jimmy Slash collaborate with? He is the ultimate Cold Steel fan, collector, user, and brand ambassador. And um, he also does blade sports. He does competition knife chopping stuff. And this is the blade that he designed and that Cold Steel produced. And and it it fits all of the blade uh, blade sport criteria. It's ten inches, I believe. I believe that's 
there is a small window uh, of size that the that the blade can be. This fits within that window at 10 inches. This is uh, serial number 11, which is pretty cool. You got the Jimmy Slash signature there. You got Craton handle, so it's that sort of rubberized handle, checkered very nicely. Beautiful bird's beak pommel there, and two lanyard holes. I know a lot of uh, uh, blade sports guys like to, uh, or competition knife guys like to put the lanyard right in there in the front instead of on the back. Um, I can't remember why that is. If you know, you can drop that in a comment. Uh, I think that's five sixteenths of an inch thick. So a big chunk of steel. It's three V three V steel, a slight swedge. I guess that's to balance out the blade, lighten out the blade a little bit. Um, and a super duper sharp, uh, apple seed edge or convex edge this thing is incredible i actually plan uh, today on the day i'm recording this hopefully to go out and chop some stuff with it i have not run that through anything yet and i am so excited uh, i have an old desk that i'm disassembling and and there is a part that i'm going to disassemble with this chopper um look at this thing thank you jimmy for this beautiful uh chopper he he had two he could give away and he chose to give one to me and man i so appreciate it and then this beautiful leather sheath it comes with man i wish cold steel would go back to their leather they did some beautiful leather sheaths in their time but i guess uh, they're beyond that at this point so uh the jimmy slash chopper go check that out from cold steel and then lastly uh i've been carrying this one a lot too this is the sentinel strike from civivi what an awesome knife great great button lock um, I was talking before about artisans button lock. This is a nice, this is a solid second. Uh, but I've been breaking this one in the coating on the blade. I'm loving how this camera is auto focusing. So <laughs> excuse me here. Uh, the, uh, the coating on the blade took, uh, about two days to, to wear a race, uh, into with the, with the bearings. And now it's nice and smooth. Uh, I mean, it was smooth before, but it didn't quite fall. Uh, like it does now just an awesome knife if you're on the fence about this i have to say do it i was on the fence and then i uh, in a moment of weakness i bought it and i'm very very glad i did this is an awesome knife so you've got the integral uh backspacer here uh, integral what is that g grn glass reinforced nylon and then the rest of the handle is aluminum and then you have a a, a beautiful blade here that worn cliff is just gorgeous uh, it's N690, I believe. What is this? Yep, N690 blade steel. So that's one of the ways they can uh, make this totally uh, amazing kind of wee worthy construction, uh, but with lesser materials than a wee knife. But this thing is, it's great. It's amazing. I mean, it's amazing <laughs> how far knives have gone. Something I really love about this is the uh, fold over pocket clip can go either way but you have no unsightly holes and you have no unsightly screws it just very discreetly fits on the top and then you have a very uh nice little tiny tungsten ball glass breaker that you don't even feel if you if you press your thumb on so man this is a very well considered knife and really really well made so i'm loving it and it's also a great emotional support knife if you need to fidget and and get that kind of nervous energy out of your system so Civivi Sentinel Strike, awesome knife. All right, so I just want to take a little bit of time here to talk about uh, fixed blade knives. I know a lot of viewers um, of this channel and then a lot of knife enthusiasts in general these days are more about the, the folders because they're easier to carry. You can carry them every day and if you're going to spend your money on a knife, you want to know that you're going to get maximum use out of it. And of course, pocket knives really fit that bill because they're discreet. You can carry them around without any issue. And uh, yeah, they are uh, just, um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought because I just saw a knife I didn't show you, but I'll show it to you later. Um, they're discreet. You can carry them around. And, and the way they're built these days, like I just showed you that Sentinel Strike, they're beautifully well-made and, and sturdy and durable uh but they aren't as sturdy as or as durable as fixed blade knives so i believe that everyone even the folder enthusiast uh dyed in the wool folder enthusiast 
should have at least one fixed blade. So if you're new to fixed blades, I have 10 suggestions that are a great place to start. And uh, for a number of reasons, and I'll, I'll enumerate those as we go through them. All right, first, uh, you won't be surprised. The first one is a cold steel. It's the SRK. This, uh, there are some more um, glamorous cold steels. By glamorous, I mean fancier or deadlier looking or, or just more audacious. But this knife has been around for a long time, and uh, it has been in the hands of everyone. Everyone from hardcore campers and outdoorsmen, outdoors people, to military. This is one that has been used in the military a lot. Uh, because it's a great all-arounder, a very grippy craton handle. You've got a, a, a six-inch um, in this in this uh, example um, carbon V steel, carbon five steel. A very very robust knife, and you have the clip point, the classic clip point, which is a style that's been used in military combat and camp knives forever. So this features all of those, but with that super durable cold steel build. Um, so this is a really, really great and high quality uh, knife for you to get for your one and only. I'm going to put this up here. We seem to be having some knife cam issues. Um, but that SRK it also comes with coating. You can get this in 3V, um, which is obviously a much more uh, high-end steel than this carbon five, uh, or you can get it in this carbon five. But uh, the 3V beware is going to be much more expensive. Let me get a little light on the situation here. All right, so there it is. That's the uh, SRK, a great knife. It also comes in the um, great Crayx uh, sheet. Secure X, sorry, Secure X sheath. Okay, what the fuck? Okay, are we back? We're back. All right, uh, next up is Mora Knife. Now, any knife from Mora Knife uh, counts on this list. Uh, but I am going to show you the one that I have. This is the number two, and it's been around forever. Now, this little guy is a um <laughs> let me bring it back this is a wood handle this is an old school version of a mora they still make these this is kind of the original type uh with that with that rounded wooden handle and the single quillion there uh four inch blade i've had this in my uh shop in here for years now and this thing has just been used and abused for i've used this to cut kydex i've used this to carve kydex uh i've used this for i don't know every every little nonsense job in here and it, it hangs on the wall and it just gets used you know for for whatever but what it's really great for is that camping application the outdoors um camping and um wood wood what do they call it? Uh, woodcraft kind of stuff. Bushcraft, sorry. Bushcraft kind of stuff. Very comfortable in the hand uh, with that round. It kind of reminds me of the grip you get on an Opinel, except a less round. It's more um, oval, so it will not turn in your hand as easily. Uh, but just a great knife for powering through and carving. Um, not full tang, not you know not something you're going to use to baton but just a great all-around fixed blade knife now this one if this is not your flavor it's a little too old-fashioned well check out the companion check out all the other really really great modern uh mora knives this i got kind of just because of its traditional look but i still need to get another mora i want to get the companion in my life just to have okay next up Part of the issue uh, with fixed blade knives is the carriage. A lot of people don't like to carry fixed blade knives in their everyday life. One way people have gotten around that is with the neck knife, which I feel like I was around for the advent of. I remember neck knives not being there, and then I remember them just kind of being there. And um, <clears throat> one that really made it very famous was the, was the uh, CRKT uh, Minimalist by Alan Foltz, a nice, beautiful little small knife that fits in any hand. It is so small that it didn't make this list, but another CRKT did. Uh, this is a neck knife. This is the 
or you could use it on the belt, drop it in the pocket or in the waistband with a static cord. This is the Obaki designed by James Williams, the Japanese sword master and Japanese martial arts uh, phenom, um, also a former guest of the show and a, a great guy. But, but his designs are, he has a lot of designs out there, some made by um, Winkler uh, under his own shingle, some made by CRK, a lot of them made by CRKT. And they all follow this sort of recipe, Japanese um, fighting knives with the sleek, slender um, blade like this, kind of the, the traditional Tonto style blade. Uh, there are a lot of different names for them, um, but I'm just going to say uh, Tonto <laughs> because uh, Quaken, I know fits for some of them. Tonto fits for some of them, and uh, there are other names that I don't remember. Uh, this has a synthetic ray skin under there, and then uh, the cord here is impregnated with um, epoxy. And you know I absolutely love the Japanese wrap for the alternating peaks and valleys that you get when you look at it from the top. It just gives incredible grip. I mean, what were the samurais? The samurai could have come up with any way to, to retain a sword or knife in their hand. They, of course, had the suba up there to stop their hands, the guard to stop their hands from sliding up. But for small knives, they didn't. And what did they do? They relied on this lace. And man, it works beautifully. Uh, and the obaki, this little knife is a great knife. Nice and light, great sheath. And here's a little detail that I like. I'm going to show you here. See if I can get this to, to show. But look at this little bead it comes with. I love this. Let's see. You see that? It's a little skull. So cool. The CRKT Obaki does make a great first fixed blade knife. It also might whet your appetite for more knives. Of course, this trends tends towards the tactical, um, and it might be a little bit too much with the black and the blood splatter pattern on it and all that. Um, so you might want to do a, a smaller everyday carry fixed blade that's a little less threatening. Maybe this fits the bill. I don't know. I'm in my own echo chamber at this point, so I don't know if this is threatening or not. I think it is not. Uh, it's got a colorful, cheerful handle, which comes in a couple of different varieties, and uh, it is a great little knife. This is the Waxahashi from Senkut. This was a gift from my awesome brother-in-law, James. Um, one of these days, I'm going to dye the scales. Uh, these are these natural scales, maroon. But look at this blade. Just a beautiful example of a clip point blade looks a lot like uh looks a lot like the the cogent uh and and a couple of other clip points from the we civivi sen cut uh family and it is a nice and thin 9 cr really thin so you're going to get a lot of uh, utility out of this slicing blade again you have a low slung point look at the point it's right about right below center line so you've you've got the uh some of the strength and thrusting capabilities of a clip point here, but you have the low slung point of, of a sort of a Warncliffe type knife. And so you get that point down low where you can really use it. The Waxahashi, uh, it's nice and light with those, uh, with the holes in the handle. Um, feels great in hand. You've got very nice jimping running up the spine almost all the way to the clip so a very nice uh feel and then it carries well i like it uh this is another one of the knives I've, i'm liking carrying scout style up front what is that called that i'm not sure if that's called scout style up front but that's what i'm calling it and these two retention straps do the job though they're not as elegant as and and discreet i'd say as like a discreet carry concepts double clip like I use on my TKLs. So I just have to get one of those to put on this. But those only work when you have the grommets on top. In this case, it, it does work. The Waxahashi, a great, great uh, budget option for a fixed blade knife. Okay, uh, next up, if you're an outdoors person, or well, you probably already have fixed blade knives, but say you're fixing to go camping, uh, you're trying to impress that girl, or uh, you're just getting into the outdoors and you want a, a great all-arounder, this is a good one. And this is, uh, uh, Off-Grid Knives has a number of great all-around uh, fixed-blade knives, but 
for this for our conversation right now i'm recommending this one this is the ridgeback version two now i had the ridge i have the ridgeback version one which is also really good but it's scandy ground and so that means this big broad kept heart blade let me show you <clears throat> Uh, has a lot more steel on it on the first version because uh, because of that Scandi grind. But here we have a full flat grind. So the grind starts at the very spine and tapers without interruption to the edge. Well, there's a secondary edge there. but uh, So that makes it way more slicey. It makes the geometry much more thin all the way up the blade and uh, makes it a much more versatile cutter. Uh, the other one, I'm sure I should have brought that one out, but that one is also great. Maybe one that you would want to use if you're doing harder tasks, like say you're going to use it to baton through wood or, you know, I did a video with, with the old one uh, where I was chopping down saplings, uh, uh, with it. It's, it's a good knife for that. But, but this one to me, I think is definitely an improvement on the design. I do love the Kephart style of blade here. I like the point center line. This would be a great one for, um, you know drilling holes and everything because you have that center line there but also you have a long straight so you could use this uh, straight cutting edge you could use this for a lot of camp chores from food to carving so um and it's reasonably priced this is a d2 blade steel uh, with a nice coating on it and uh, micarta handles just an awesome knife uh if you get one of these i recommend you go to the knifechunky.com slash off grid. We have an affiliate program with them and uh, it helps the channel out ever so slightly. And I really appreciate it if you do. Uh, but that's not, uh, you know, that's not required, but this is a great knife for those kind of outdoor tasks. Uh, it was kind of a toss up between this, the Grizzly, which is the kitchen camp knife and the back country. The Grizzly I thought was too specialized because I wouldn't want to go too hard with that knife on the outdoor tasks and the back country has a recurve and that turns some people off. And to me that, that knife is a little, is quite tactical, uh, in a lovely way. So this one is a much better all arounder, I'd say. So that's the Ridgeback V2 also comes with a great sheath, which they improved on the version two. They took it from a pancake to a taco. So it's a much more uh, discreet, uh, what do you call it? Uh, footprint. All right, next up. Now, let's assume that you want something small and light and tactical. Uh, well, I have a couple options here. One of them is more expensive than the other. Let's start with the expensive one. This is the Fred Perrin designed Street Bowie from Spyderco. Fred Perrin is a French badass. He was, I guess, a French commando, maybe with the Foreign Legion. I don't know. I can't remember, but I know he was a, a tier one guy over there in france before they were calling them tier one and he is he's an interesting cat i met him uh, at blade show 2022 and um he was showing me all of his wares and he has all these sneaky nasty weapons um but he makes knives custom knives and then he designs them also and has them produced in a couple different places chief among them spider co and this is his famous street bowie uh, he has one also called the Street Beat Bowie, which is smaller than this and has a uh, micarta handle and therefore more expensive. And I think it's got a polished blade. VG10, uh, you've got a craton handle here with a rubberized uh, insert, Coke bottle contouring, jimping from all the way back here to up here. Uh, this thing is, well, I got to say, it is built for fighting. This is a fighting knife and a one for discreet carry, uh, but it's also kind of like a small version of the um, Trailmaster Bowie in that it is a, uh, the, the overall profile is very similar and it's got a full flat grind. So it is a very useful knife uh, for things other than fighting. But some of the designs you'll see uh, that are very Fred Perrin is, comes out of French fighting knife tradition. That is having a wider blade uh, at the Ricasso, then handle at the Ricasso. So the handle tapers to a thinner point and the blade itself becomes the guard, kind of like a chef's knife. If you look up kind of, uh, if you look up older French fighting knives, you'll see they, they actually look a lot like French uh, chef's knives. Uh, this one has the, has the 
finger choil that is not circular. It is uh, it is asymmetrical, and that actually um, I think that's for a reason. Now I don't have any um, corroboration about that, but it sets the angle of the blade at a slightly more downward rake or slightly more downward tilt. So I think that accelerates the slashing capabilities, especially towards the front of the blade and uh, kind of negates some of what you lose from that upswept uh, point. So um, I think that's why either that or it just looks cool. But uh, you get the uh, customary opening hole there, the, the round circular hole from Cold Steel has to, or from uh, Spyderco has to be on everything they do. Cool little touch. Uh, the sheath, which I hated at first, I actually like pretty well. Uh, it, it's uh, loose enough that you can draw it really quickly, really easily, and uh, and bring the knife to bear. Sorry for the freezing here, guys. We will we will work this out. I think my new camera's throwing a hitch in somehow. All right, next up, this is your inexpensive tactical model that also has practical uses. This is the Cold Steel Coban, a classic. I love this knife. This has uh, been around for a long time. They had the Koban and the Oyuban, which means boss. I think Koban means bodyguard. And the boss was obviously a bigger version of this. That one went away, but this one has stuck around and has maintained its $40 price tag for a long time. Uh, that's Aus 8 Blade Steel. Uh, and you know, Cold Steel, you're, you're, you're turning your nose up at the Aus 8, but Cold Steel does an incredible job heat treating all of their steels. Uh, from the XHP and the S35s to the and the three Vs to the 14, 16 or 41, 16 Krups and and the Aus eights and whatever else they do. So they they just nail the heat treat, and uh, that's how they can keep the cost down. Uh, beautiful Tonto blade with a super thin hollow grind on the main portion. Good belly. I like Tonto with a belly, and then you have a secondary point and that chisel tip which is very, very sharp. Uh, this knife has a very thin profile, thin handle, but still Coke bottled there and uh, is just a very comfortable knife to grip. And I find it especially comfortable in the reverse grip, a grip you might uh, consider using for this knife, um, seeing as it is a sort of a self-defense knife. You could use this for anything, of course, and uh, to great aplomb, no doubt. And I I'm always surprised that that there aren't more outdoor tantos, but maybe that's because I'm not really an outdoorsman that it surprises me, but I bet you could use this in camp as well as uh, combat. Uh, but one last thing I wanted to mention about this, what was it? Oh yeah. Yeah. When my sister had uh, a, a, uh, an undesirable guy giving her attention, I bought her one of these uh, and uh, thank God she never had to use it. And thank God that guy went away. Uh, but, there you go. The Kobun was going to be her bodyguard. And then I made her a knife. So hopefully uh, she never has to use them. All right. Next up, this is a this is a good one. This is a little bit more expensive. It's a tops knife. It's over a hundred bucks. Um, some, you know, most of these are under a hundred bucks. This one is I think you can get this one for one thirty five now or something like that. This is the Tex Creek, the Tops Tex Creek. They do have an XL version of this uh, with the same handle, uh, but this one uh, is so awesome. This has seen a lot of outdoor use. This was my outdoor, like kind of lawn mowing and taking care of the yard knife for a while. I love that really nice drop sheath, that high grain leather pouch sheath here is really nice. But I got this knife originally to practice kydex. I made a kydex sheath for this and I was intending on carrying this uh, concealed for a while, but that handle's just too long uh, for that purpose. But for outdoor work and just camp, this thing is awesome. I love it. I love it a lot. Um, it's very comfortable in hand. It's also comfortable with gloves. That big jumping does not bother the thumbs uh, naked, but when you, if you have gloves on, those, they really dig in into those uh, big pockets there. Uh, this one has been used quite a bit. It's uh, and I have sharpened out chips because I've hit uh, chain link fence uh, fence with this while clearing vines and stuff. Uh, so I, I can highly recommend this one um, for all sorts of use. But I especially I really do like this 
this style of pouch. I'm coming around to it more and more, especially for things you're actually using. Now, the tactical knives uh, I don't really use because I don't have a tactical lifestyle, but this I do. And when you're taking your knife in and out of the sheath, it's nice to just drop it in and just pull it out without without having to fuss with a strap or or much retention. So um, there is that. All right, second to last and penultimate knife here. Uh, this is a true classic. These last two are true classics. This one can be uh, gotten at Walmart or pretty much anywhere for, for not too much. It's the Buck 119 in the classic leather sheath. This classic clip point hunter. We've been seeing this knife for years. I remember seeing these at the hardware store in a case when I was a little kid and thinking ultimate pirate knife, my God, ultimate cowboy knife, I need one. And uh, this was a gift to me from a husband of a cousin of my wife he, a bunch uh, at, during a birthday a number of years ago. I don't remember what, which birthday. It could have been 46. But uh, I opened it up. And I was like, how cool. This guy knows I like knives. And he got me this and I love it because I got to be honest, this is not a knife I was going to get myself, but I'm so glad I have it and I can recommend everyone get one. Uh, it's got 420, um, 420 blade steel, but it's got the, the awesome heat treat uh, that Buck does. And uh, so it, it's a pretty, pretty uh, tough blade, thinly hollow ground with a very high uh, cutting edge. So it's like super slicey. Man, this will zip through whatever you got. Nice fuller on there to lighten up the blade and give some rigidity. A nearly zero ground swedge, which I love. This knife would, uh, you know, this is, I'm sure, has been a, uh, a redneck tactical for a long time. I shouldn't say redneck, but uh, I'm borrowing that uh, term from, from Rob Bixby. Uh, that's what he said about the Buck 110. He's like, yeah, we have all these fancy newfangled tactical knives, but... But, you know, dudes in the country have been using the Buck 110 and the 119 as tactical knives like for a long time. So that's what you got here. Uh, but it is also known for its uh, outdoor and hunting knife prowess. Uh, you might get something smaller to uh, skin an animal. But but if you don't, that upswept Bowie uh, keeps the tip uh, far enough away from the guts uh, is what I've heard as you're doing this. Um, I don't know. You're. If you are a hunter, you might be laughing at your screen, but uh, that's what I'm told. Uh, love this knife. Love the big grip. You will too. Lastly, I'm sure you know what the last one on the list is. I recommend these all the time when people say, what fixed blade should I get? Yes, it's a K-Bar. Now, it won't be this K-Bar because this one was a limited edition in the early 90s or late 80s that my brother got me. Um, I think he got me this for for my graduation. I could be wrong. Uh, but anyway, uh, look at this thing. A beautiful, beautiful knife. So that's what you get from a K-Bar. This one is, uh, uh, like I said, a reissue of the 19, uh, of the World War II version. So it's got a real sharpened swedge and, and the whole nine yards. The ones you get now have a less, less of a curve on the swedge and the swedge is not sharpened, which makes it a much better utility tool. This when this was designed, it was it was being thought of as a weapon, primarily, you know, a fighting knife and then a utility knife. Uh, that that recipe is sort of flipped now. It's more of a utility fighting knife because the reality is uh, people tend not to knife fight in combat these days. Uh, but there are circumstances I hear of. As a matter of fact, uh, I've heard from from very personal stories of people clearing rooms and Afghanistan or Iraq and getting tackled and then the thing that you rely on is a knife but it probably will not be one this big uh, in that situation in a tussle like that who knows I don't know uh, but I've heard of people using smaller knives in combat to great effect uh, this is uh, you can see a million videos of people using these as camp knives as outdoors knives uh, as all around um camp knives and just fixed blades. This is a great knife. I'm going to go over to the main cam with this. Uh, you could really, really see how this knife uh, by the bedside would give you a lot of confidence. I had had a buddy um, who, when I was a roommate with him, he had the uh, Marine version of this. It was bl all black and he, he taped it to the 
to the leg of his bed. And he was not a tactical guy, but we lived in Philly at the time. So there was reason. And uh, this was the knife that gave him confidence. Also, his dad was a Marine back in the day, so he knew it came highly recommended. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for my uh, are you new to fixed blades? Start here list. Uh, do check them out uh, if you have a chance. And also, if you're new to fixed blades, you should consider the secondary market. Uh, if you want to try something out, don't want to spend full price, take a look at blade forums and other places. Uh, Reddit, I hear, is where the kids go. All right. Thanks for joining us. Uh, be sure to join us on Sunday for another great interview, Wednesday for another great midweek supplemental, and then Thursday for Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.